Hello and welcome! My name is Megan, and today we are painting a Reaper Bones Dragon Turtle. The Dragon Turtle is a legendary creature from Chinese mythology that was adapted to Dungeons & Dragons, and it has been around since the very inception of Dungeons & Dragons. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my tap tap priming technique, and I followed that up with a light dry brushing with white in order to highlight the textures on the model. As a person that loves to paint dragons, I was only slightly disappointed that this model was significantly more turtle than dragon. But what's a painter to do? Get a different model? <sighs> so anyways, I laid down a base coat of Vallejo Heavy Black Green. This comes from a line that is extra opaque, which is a real boon when you're applying your first layer of paint. I used Vallejo Sick Green as my first highlight, and this is just applied in flat areas and anywhere where the light would lighten the skin. I put some extra focus in the top of the head. As you can see, I really wanted to bring out these large scales. While I'm applying highlights, why don't we go over a little bit of the lore around dragon turtles. These monstrous turtles can dwell in either salt or fresh water, so long as the body of water is large enough to house the dragon turtle in question. Next, I decided to glaze in some more brightness using green ink, which I applied over most of the model. Dragon turtles were for a long time the deadliest creature you could encounter on water before they were surpassed by the kraken. Dragon turtles can grow to be so large that sailors would actually mistake their shells for small islands, which is a really terrifying thing to imagine, or really cool depending on whether or not you're thinking of the dragon turtles, sorry, lion turtles from Avatar The Last Airbender. However, in this case, it would be a very bad mistake to make because dragon turtles are not at all friendly. Some sailors, if they knew that they were sailing through waters that may house a dragon turtle, would actually carry extra treasure in order to try to bribe a dragon turtle into not killing them. I don't know how effective this really would be because dragon turtles, as with other dragons, are huge fans of treasure. But I mean, if you're being bribed with treasure, surely there's more treasure on board, and how difficult can it be to knock over a ship? I don't know. Maybe the sailors were just hoping that the dragon turtle they ran into would be lazy. Okay. My, le my next highlights were applied with Vallejo Library Green and Goblin Green. And these were applied in increasingly small areas in order to bring out the smaller details on the model. If you're painting this model and don't really feel like highlighting all of the skin, then you may want to take advantage of dry brushing. Because this model is so textured, a good dry brush would probably be enough to get the highlights that you want quickly and easily. I think I've mentioned before, dry brushing is best used on highly textured models such as the scaly skin or the fur of a wolf, a crumbling stone, or even feathers. Some mini painters actually scoff at the use of dry brushing and washes because for whatever reason they think that it is cheating or lazy and I'm here to tell you that they're wrong, okay? Not everyone will have five extra hours in their day in order to sit down and painstakingly highlight every part of a model. You just do you, okay? And I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. Uh, back to the dragon turtle lore. The breath weapon of a dragon turtle is a gout of steam that deals 
a huge amount of fire damage that could easily wipe out a party of player characters. And if it is an ancient dragon turtle, which was introduced in Fizban's Treasury of Dragons, then your characters will be in even more danger. The ancient dragon turtle has two health bars, so upon dealing the first 400 or so points of damage, the dragon turtle will regain 350 hit points uh, and has the armor of storms ability which means that anytime a player deals combat damage to it that player will actually take lightning damage in return the dragon turtle also gets some legendary actions uh, long story short just uh, don't get on the bad side of a dragon turtle and maybe never go sailing. <laughs> it was around this point in painting that I started wishing I had used the Bowser aesthetic for the model, but I just did a Nintendo character so I don't want that to be my entire channel, especially since I don't actually like Mario. I'm more of a Baldur's Gate Horizon Zero Dawn kind of lady. So, after applying the base layer of Heavy Sienna on the shell, I decided to do the stomach. I used Bow and White. I do not recommend this. It took way too many layers, and I think about 50% of my footage was just me applying more and more layers of bone white. This is actually a huge issue. If you apply too many layers of paint, you can actually lose details on your model. Fortunately, in this case, I did not, which was just dumb luck, I guess. Okay, I created deep shadows on the dragon turtle's shell using Vallejo smoke, which I applied only in the deepest recesses of the shell and at the bottoms of these tail spikes, as well as the bottom of the shell where it would naturally be darker due to there being little to no light, also known as in shadow. So this doesn't look great at the moment, but just trust the process. My next step was to mix 50-50 smoke to water in order to darken the rest of the shell to get its color a little bit closer to the deep recesses. I think this did well to unify the shadow to the rest of the shell and created a good base for my later highlights. Next, I went back to Heavy Sienna for my first highlight. Now, you may be thinking, Hey Megan, didn't you use Heavy Sienna as your base for the shell? And you are absolutely right. Um, I could have just started with a darker color and highlighted with Heavy Sienna, but here's the thing you didn't realize. I don't plan. I should, but I don't. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, I'm certain you thought that I was a professional that meticulously plans out every step of the model before I even start. Aside from the occasional reference photo, I do not. I mean, sometimes even I'm surprised with where the model ended up. So I guess what I'm saying is that planning is actually just a scam by Big Notebook in order to force people to think that they need to purchase these notebooks to write down their plans. I mean, how many daily planners have you bought or notebooks planning to record everything you're going to be doing for the rest of the week? only to have them sit abandoned 
in your closet or desk drawer. I know for a fact that at the beginning of every semester in college, I bought a daily planner fully intending this year was going to be the year that I recorded my plans for the week, wrote down all the homework I had. So yeah, it's a scam. You just gotta, you gotta live life one step at a time. Don't look ahead. Anyways, back to the model. I did my second layer of highlights with Vallejo Heavy Brown. This is applied along edges and near the tops of the spikes in order to add some depth and really bring out the details in the model. This right here is my favorite step in painting. I really love seeing how much more alive the model becomes when you add these final detailed highlights. It's just so satisfying. What do you think, fellow mini painters? What's your favorite step or technique? And what's your least favorite? For me, you might expect, I would say, the base layers, which can occasionally take a lot longer than everything else. But in reality, it's the eyes. Not that I paint bad eyes. I just have some difficulties because I occasionally have shaky hands, which I guess is why it's always the last thing I paint on the model. For the next highlight, I use a mixture of Vallejo Heavy Brown and White. Once I finished applying this final highlight, I used Vallejo Wood Grain to unify the highlights and create gentler transitions from the dark to the light. The astute among you might notice that this is a very similar technique to what I used for leather on the Mechanical Dragon video. Moving on to the belly, I used Army Painter Speed Paint Pallid Bone in order to dirty up the chest plates and put shadows into the crevices. This was applied in a thin, very slightly watered down layer. You don't need to water it down very much because the speed paint is already very thin. I followed this up with a quick dry brushing of Vallejo Bone White. If you're not sure what dry brushing is, it's quite simple. You use a dry brush and remove the majority of the paint so that when you brush it across the model's surface, it will only deposit paint onto the highest or raised portions of the model. And this is my favorite method for painting bones, but I do not recommend it for use on teeth because generally you do not want your teeth to be quite that disgusting. I then used Vallejo Ivory to create an even brighter highlight and for this I removed even more of the paint because I don't want to completely cover up the first highlight of Bone White. I base coated the mouth with Vallejo Red and I used ivory for the eyes. Generally, eyes are not pure white, so it's a good idea to use an off-white color. After the red base coat, I used Vallejo Worn Red because I googled images of the insides of turtle mouths, and not only do they have teeth, their mouths are also closer to pink than they are to red. I mixed Vallejo Warm Red with more and more white to create the highlights. Generally, you don't want to highlight red by mixing the color with white because that creates pink. But in this case, I was actually going for a pink shade. I painted the toenails and claws with black, which I then mixed with increasing amounts of white to create the highlights. A lot of people will go all the way up to white for black highlights, but in this case I didn't bother because I don't think that the claws or toenails will be quite that shiny. And with that, we're just about done painting the model. And all that is left 
is the Dreaded Eyes. I used Citadel Aerial Yellow for the irises, and I used black for the pupils. Turtle pupils are very strange. They were, were both vertical and had a horizontal stripe. I, I attempted to mimic this because I just thought they were really neat. A mixture between prey and predator eyes. I then put some life into the eyes using pure Vallejo white. And with that, I think we're on to the glamour shots. I'm really happy with how this model came out, and I'm especially pleased with how my water base came out. In a future video, I will go over how to make one of these bases, but my video was running a little bit long, so I didn't do it this time. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and have a fantastic day!